40% of Republican-leaning people is a healthy chunk of the party. So maybe that's why they're so focused on the technicality of Roe v. Wade not banning abortion, even though it will directly result in it being banned in many states. And it's also probably why they're groping their pearls over the leak. I want to begin with the leak itself. It is unprecedented for a full draft decision to leak this way. You've heard of you know, sort of the outcomes of decisions leaking before that happened with Roe itself, but but the actual draft decision for that to leak into full public view is insane. This, coupled with the leak, uh, demonstrates how the left is so obsessed with this issue that they're willing to delegitimize one of the most revered institutions in our system of government, an institution that, despite its flaws, warts and all, has served our country well. Sorry, interrupting the montage to point out how cool it is for Republican Senator Mike Lee to say the left is obsessed with abortion and not his own party, who are making laws to do bounty hunting on anyone helping someone get an abortion. Anyway, continue the montage of very serious people. Oh, can we actually get, like, some really dramatic music over it, too? The institution that I'm a part of, uh, if someone said that one line of one opinion would be leaked by anyone and you would say, that, oh, that's impossible. No one would ever do that. There's such a uh, belief in the rule of law, a belief in the court, a belief in what we were doing, that that was verboten. It was beyond anyone's understanding. Sorry, interrupting the montage again to point out that this dude's wife tried to privately pressure lawmakers into overturning Biden's presidential victory in favor of Trump. And when the Supreme Court ruled they would not take the case of Pennsylvania Republicans who wanted to challenge the election results, Clarence Thomas dissented. And it's hard to know how much of this is because he's a conservative shill or a shill for his wife. Anyway, continue the montage, which I get is it's not technically a montage anymore. Continue and then conclude the series of regularly interrupted clips, please. Let me explain this. Uh, not a big fan of the leak. I'm glad to hear what we've heard. But let me give you a guess. I'm pretty sure the leak is from a leftist. Why? This is an intimidation tactic. Oh, my stars and goddess, not the sanctity of the Supreme Court. Or wait, counterpoint. Who gives a f pebble of a shit if we're talking about the sanctity of the Supreme Court like it's some holy resting place. Uh, well, hey, have you guys looked at the Supreme Court lately? It's kind of a hot mess and not the fun kind you'd smuggle across state lines. Like, for starters, the Supreme Court has very little in terms of oversight. Also, the judges are not governed by any code of ethical conduct and are the only judges in the entire U.S. exempt from such. That's that's odd, huh? Justice John Roberts was looking into developing an ethical code, but I guess they just kind of gave up. So I don't know, maybe these people suddenly concerned with the Supreme Court's sanctity could look into that. There's also the growing issue of the shadow docket, which is an emergency procedure where the court can issue summary decisions without oral arguments. It's meant to only be used when not issuing an immediate order would cause irreparable harm. For that reason, it used to be implemented very infrequently. But since 2017, it's become routine. To quote Associate Justice Elena Kagan, the court's use of it has become more unreasonable, inconsistent, and impossible to defend. That was from her dissent to the whole Woman's Health versus Jackson case, which challenged the Texas's Heartbeat Act that outlaws abortions after a heartbeat is detected and allows people to sue anyone who helps women seek abortions. It's that bounty hunting anti-abortion law in Texas you might have heard about. And this challenge to the law brought to the Supreme Court was relegated to the shadow docket before getting dismissed with no oral arguments, no hearing, no transparency. Just... <laughs> Womp womp shrug. The lack of transparency and oversight is especially concerning given the clear conflict of interest we see with Clarence Thomas. As I mentioned earlier, his wife Ginny Thomas texted Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, pleading with him to help overturn the election. And yet Clarence Thomas hasn't recused himself from any cases regarding the election despite a possible conflict of interest. Very good integrity and sanctity, guys. You're nailing it. Also, like five of the nine Supreme Court justices are blatant conservative partisans, and Mitch McConnell didn't let Obama have a justice in his last year in office while rushing through Trump's appointee less than a month before the election, before Ginsburg's body was cold. So, you know, sure seems like they don't actually give a shit about the sanctity of the Supreme Court or really anything at all.
Hey, thanks for watching that clip. Here's the evergreen end plate to ask you to like and subscribe. It's any day of the year where you are.